Hi, my name is Alison Clark. I'm an RSC at Advanced Research Computing or ARC at Durham University. After my master's degree in computer science, I spent over 15 years working as a software engineer in industry in various sectors from security and defense via marketing to finance. Most of my experience is in web and mobile development in various languages, but I've also done some infrastructure and DevOps work. My last role in industry was working for a company which produced charting and other frameworks for mobile development. As well as developing the software frameworks, I supported the developers who bought them, maintained the website and tweeted and blogged about the products. In 2019, I took some time to reassess my career and realized that although I really enjoyed software engineering, I wanted to do something that would have a more positive impact than my previous work. The opportunity to work as a research software engineer fulfilled that brief and I started work for ARC at Durham University in September 2019. Since starting, I've worked on various projects across the university, including DREX, an app and website developed by the psychology department for sufferers of partial visual loss, HEPData, an open access repository for data from experimental particle physics, agent-based modeling with the School of Education, and Entimement with the music department, making a pose estimation model easier to run and adding post-processing features. I've also been involved in grant applications for other projects. As a newly formed RSE group in ARC, we have set up training courses for researchers across the university. I tutor the Git course, as well as assisting on my colleagues' courses. I've also taken an instructor training course run by the regional NHCIR group. At ARC, we also spend time raising awareness of the services we offer. For example, via a now virtual research methods cafe in association with Durham Research Methods Centre. We hold weekly conversations with staff from a wide range of departments on issues relating to research methods, data management and software. Since becoming an RSC, I've attended the RSC conference and last year's collaborations workshop, and I'm on the programme committee for Source. I've really enjoyed my interactions with the RSC and SSI communities and would love the opportunity to have more involvement. Coming from industry into academia has been a bit of an eye opener when it comes to best practice in software development. In my past jobs, the use of version control, testing and continuous integration is pretty much a given. In academia, many researchers are self-taught programmers and aren't aware of these tools or see too many hurdles in the way of using them. As an RSE group, our training courses aim to help researchers to gain some of these skills. However, in a recent cafe conversation, I realized that some of those who had previously taken part in my Git course hadn't used it since. One course participant told me that she just hadn't worked out how it could fit into her workflow. So my plans for the fellowship would be to make steps towards creating domain specific paths for software sustainability training. Initially, I would work with one department to look at how they work, to find the right tools to help them to use sustainable software practices in their work and ultimately to produce training resources that are suitable for their domain and to disseminate those resources via local, regional and national groups. As an example, one user in the archaeology department is using several different GUI based tools plus various programming languages to process data and get it into a database. As she put it, she has snippets of code to drive things with buttons. She finds it hard to reproduce analyses that she did several months ago. Ideally, we could find a way to store all the disparate parts in version control to allow her to look back over how things were done previously. We could also investigate whether the pipeline could be automated. Reproducibility in this scenario isn't something that can be solved with Git alone. Here's my plan. I will start by working with a group of users in the archaeology department where researchers have a very wide range of computational needs and practices from analyzing ancient DNA to text mining historic sources and where there are gaps between those confident in their ability to reproduce their analyses and those who would find it very difficult. I will hold a series of workshops to brainstorm, look at their current workflows, and to find tools and workflows that will help them all to create and use software sustainably. Once I know what they need, I can look for or create suitable training materials. Some materials may already exist in a format that could be reused, for example, in the Turing way or as software carpentry courses. Others may need to be created from scratch. Others may exist, but need to be tailored to use examples that are relevant to archeology. span Using these training materials, 
I will hold some training courses, which I can open up to archaeologists at a regional level, using contacts in the N8 community and using fellowship funds to pay for cloud-based services that would ensure users had a common environment on which to train, whether remotely or in person. I'll then gather feedback and refine the courses. I will then disseminate the materials further in various ways. For example, inviting other RSE groups to use the materials and gathering their feedback and holding workshops at one or more domain specific conferences, such as that of the European Association of Archaeologists. If time allows, I will repeat this work in another domain, making use of some of the previous materials, but retailoring them to the new domain. By documenting my approach and experiences, by the end of my fellowship, not only will I have produced training materials that could be used to improve software sustainability in one or more domains, but also a process which I or other RSEs could repeat to produce similar materials in other domains. Thank you for listening.